Jean Keen has been in Alaska for 14 years. Most of it spent living in her trailer home. Its walls offer evidence of her travels around the state, but there is a specific reason that Jean remains anchored on the Homer Spit these days. Every morning from November to April, Jean chops up more than 100 pounds of fish scrap she brings home from the processing plant where she works. It's a routine unbroken even by a minus 30 degree wind chill. But even in this cold, her activity isn't going unnoticed. Seagulls show very little fear in snapping up what she gives them, but she doesn't do this for the gulls. You see, in Homer, Jean is the eagle lady. Six years ago, she started feeding a couple of bald eagles during the winter. Nowadays, she gets as many as 70 eagles on the beach in one day. Jean is credited with helping a boon in the eagle population, because the majority of the eagles are young ones with splotched feathers, lacking the distinctive bald head. It's getting to be quite a job, although I still enjoy it very much, and I certainly would not stop. And, but it takes about uh, an hour and a half to two hours a day to get the food cut up and ready for them. It may seem demeaning that our national symbol has to stoop to taking handouts rather than hunting from the skies. That's all part of the fallacy of the bald eagle legend. The bald eagle is not a great hunter. It is a great scavenger. But Jean doesn't mind the eagle's eating habits, or the other birds for that matter. She also isn't worried about the eagles becoming dependent on her. She says that every spring they all leave for other parts of Alaska. Jean says she doesn't see herself living in a trailer on the spit forever, but she also says she isn't sure when she'll leave. In Homer, Des Keller, New Service 2. I hope I'm getting this right. Anyway, this is my flower garden, part of it. And I want to show you my patio that I put in this year. Haven't had too much chance to enjoy it yet, but I enjoy watching it anyway and taking care of the flowers. Wished everybody was here for a big cookout. Think I'll go and turn partner loose and get the dogs involved here.
There's my whale rib bone. Can't hardly see it behind this tree here. There, it's underneath the the moose rack. So, okay, I'm gonna put this on pause and uh, go ahead and and get my snowy owl out here. I think I'll bring Daisy May up a little closer. There she is, she's fat and sassy as ever. Okay, got my snowy owl out here. I didn't see how close I can bring him up here. Maybe getting out of focus, I don't know. Got that from a friend of mine. He was mounted many years ago. And that's either a, a female or an immature one because he's got quite a few brown speckles on him. So anyway, I keep it in the motorhome. Kind of looks at me every time I wake up in the morning. So let's see if I can show you some more of the yard here now. Got two little pine trees here, they'll probably get in the way a little bit. That's a pretty solid fence that I put up this spring. Okay, this is another view of my yard. Lengthwise, we got a nice redwood kitchen table here. Got a big barbecue in the corner, but I got it covered, covered over with the blue tarp for the green plate. Daisy, where are you? Are you in one of Hey, Daisy. I guess the Daisy's going to fly. Daisy. Well, here, come here, Daisy. Come on. The roaring sound you hear on there is probably the freezer that's right next to me. Come on, come on. Come on. that uh, I'm not talking loud enough for one thing but I want to show you some of the scenery that I have for my yard here mountains across the way They've, most of the snow has gone off them now in the winter time that snow comes clear down to the water it's really pretty prettier then than it is now There's a little fishing boat coming in and here's the corner of my motor home so it uh, it gets, it gets pretty breezy out here sometimes. I'm also not getting these colors the way I'd like to, and I don't know just how to do this. This isn't my camera, but it's only about the third time I've used it. Probably another charter boat. Been a lot of halibut caught this year, big halibut. Over 100 pounds, some of them 300 pounds. So that's a, kind of a close view of the fence. And that's the mountains going out there. So I may put this back and 
give you a little different angle of the eye. I like to take a picture of my gate. It's, I've got a great big gate with a, a friend of mine painted a big eagle scene on it. There's quite a few people around because I'm right here on the campground. I don't know if I'll be too embarrassed to do it or not. But anyway, I'm going to put this thing on pause again. Well, see if I can get a close-up of some of my pretty flowers here. I guess I'm going to have to put it at a different angle. I'm going to. There's one right there, a big pink one, begonia, and a big red begonia. That's kind of a double fence here. I've got pallets in between and then plywood on each side. So I can set the flowers in on top there and put all the netting and all the starfish and every the other goodies off the beach that I caught. Go ahead and put them in the in the netting. Makes it a little bit more colorful. Okay, there's a close-up shot. Hope I'm getting the right colors on this. Those are really beautiful flowers. Partner's doghouse. There's a sled on top of it that I hook him up to once in a while in the wintertime. He's laying down here in front of the camera. Once in a while, you see his tail wag up in front there. And so that's a better view of the horns. And uh, my old windsock up there tells me how hard the wind is blowing, which it is a lot of the time. So there's another shot of the old patio. Probably get tired of seeing this. But anyway, I'm having a little fun and kind of practicing. A lot of heavy clouds today, but uh, anyway, I hope you don't get bored with it. I'll zoom in on the shot here. Keep those flowers kind of down tucked in underneath there, then they don't get whipped by the wind a lot. Shot of my two little pine trees. Kind of a lot of noise around here today. A lot of campers moving in and out. Stuff like that. So I think I'll try to move this thing outside the gate and take a picture of my eagle scene. And that's a picture of my gate. Anyway, I'm gonna go over here and sit down. Hope you like the pictures real well. And as you can see earlier in the film, I dropped the damn camera. But anyway, it's all right. It just I thought it was fast and tight on the tripod, and it wasn't. And all of a sudden, it just went boom. So, I might just leave the shot in. And then the eagle pictures before that were taken last March. The first ones were taken last February when the TV thing did a really very cold day, and not too many eagles in that day. It was a bad day to do it. But uh, anyway, then we got some a lot better pictures. Harold did anyway. Bought it. Oh, I guess it was. April, yeah, uh, March or April, and uh, so it, it, and that part of it has been copied, so it's not as good as as the original one, and and the people who copied it for it, <laughs> copied them for me, uh, I think accidentally erased the original one, so I don't even know if I've got anything better than this until next time we get a chance to take some more pictures of the eagles, but. I better sign off now so you don't get too bored, but 
anyway, happy birthday, kids, and a big kid to Chelsea. And I'll see you before too long, I hope. So, hope to talk to you on the phone. All right, bye-bye.